We are back. Falcons franchise. And we have a lot to cover. First off, mock draft one. We're probably middle of the pack. We're playing, they're playing the Cardinals today. They're projected to go as Eagle Gains. The Panthers are... Uh, uh, Allen uh, Vaughn. Vaughn. We are... Wow, pick seven. Oh. Mitchell Blaylock. Right outside linebacker. Now for Buccaneers are projected to go Barry Waters safety. Where are the Saints? Did I miss the Saints? Oh, I did. They're projected to go QB Mike Shetland. Okay, so now we just we have short meeting our third. First and ninth football game in a row, conveniently. Kind of weird. But. Gordon. Alright, Gordon. Well, beat the Cardinals and commit. I believe that's a one or fewer turnovers. So, one or zero. Players ready to negotiate. We're not allowed to negotiate players. But, players who are going to need contracts. Kyle Pitts. Jalen Phillips. Young Oku. William Jackson. Richie Grant. Foya Seydoulou Kuhn. John Kaminsky. Jalen Mayfield, Greg Little, DJ Jones, Taquan Graham, TJ Green, Audit Kumbo, Ogan Deji, Drew Dahlman, Dorian Efridge, Daryl Williams, and PJ Walker. Yeah. So instantly, Kyle Pitts must bring back. Jalen Phillips must bring back. I'd love to bring back Young Koku, but I'd love to bring back Richie Grant. What's our cap room looking like? That's going to be the big concern. We have a lot of money. So hopefully this is going to be the year where we actually save some of our money. I want to bring back Jalen Mayfield. I really like him as a backup. Greg Little. It's Austin Jackson's turn. I'm sorry, man. Uh, DJ Jones, maybe for a year. Quan Graham, maybe for a year. Like all, A lot of these guys are young and solid. Like Drew Dahlman, 70 overall, 70 overall and only 25. Are they... Audita, Audita Kumbo Ogundeji, 72 overall, 25. DJ, oh, DJ Green. Taquan Graham, 74 overall, 25. Like, the Greg Glittle was not demanding 10 mil a year, or a year, uh, over two years. I glad we bring him back. But... We do have a lot of practice squads. Tevin Childish got stolen. Eric Hillman, who I'm completely fine with. Josh Waddle. Jonathan Baker. And Brian Ware. So, if we just go quickly to our roster and we go over to practice squad, you're going to notice there is a huge hole. We are missing six people. We had all 12 players originally, and now we're down to 6. We have Vier Franklin, I believe. No, Victor. Whoops. Uh, Luke Brockers. A. Cash. Aaron Cash. He's a nice rookie. Uh, K.J. McGee, another good rookie. Larry May Mabry. Tom Trott Heating is signed. And Julius George. So, we're just going to... Nick Bourne was another huge guy who got signed. So now, we dry, we spent a good pick on him, and you you know he's not here anymore. So we now go to practice squad. Oop, not ineligible. Eligible. We're gonna bring in Quentin Biggers. I said I was probably gonna bring him in last episode because we saw how many guys got signed. We're gonna do it now. Tight end wise. Ooh, there's no one. Caleb Morris. I feel like we have to bring in Caleb Morris. We. Oh, there's a lot of right tackles, actually. We're going to bring in Carter Rose. He's from Florida State. The other guy's from Ohio State. Florida State is very close 
well, way closer to Atlanta, Georgia than Ohio. Drawn Pettis. I believe that's four. George Gresham. I considered bringing him in, like, to the actual roster. Uh, there's probably not going to be any guys. We're going to bring in Ricky Terry. I believe we're going to bring in one more guy. We can. Okay. And we'll bring in DeAndre Huntley. Can we bring in another guy? We can't. Okay. So now that we've gotten our roster filled out, it's time to do our weekly strategy. We do have 10 staff points. We're not going to spend them. Halfback Ben Craig, I believe, who is an X-Factor, apparently. They are currently struggling. But this is not something to just overlook. This is probably one of the best all-around rosters. I think we're going to contain the QB scramble, honestly. I think we're going to uh, with Gordon, I feel like inside. We have the fifth best defense and uh, the worst offense. Pretty normal around here where we have a great defense and a horrible offense. John Kaminsky is going to be out with a shoulder strain. And William Jackson is going to be out with a quad strain. That might have been a mistake bringing William Jackson back. He's been injured twice now. Well, once. He got injured twice, technically. But this was during week one, where we lost to the the Chiefs, apparently 27 to 17. Once again, we we watched that game. You can check the video and everything. We lost that game 20 to 14, and we had a bunch of key injuries. Like, uh, William Jackson was one. I want to say Marquise Brown was one. We had like a lot of injuries, essentially. And that did just end up getting erased due to the fact that, you know, the EA servers cr crashed. More like they're just so bad that, you know, yeah. So, practically every stat in that got erased. There's not much I can do about that. We just gave the Chiefs the force win. And, yeah, we just kind of... Moved on. Either way, it wouldn't really matter for anything besides stats and injuries. But there's nothing I can do about this. You know, I don't work at EA. EA really does not listen to their actual people. Unless if it's, you know, friggin' Twitter hashtag trending on Twitter. And I do not think we're going to get a Twitter hashtag trending on Twitter anytime soon. Because to be fair, there's a lot more stuff I'd like to get fixed before, you know, this. As Murray's going to scramble, and he's going to stiff arm Noah Monogane. He got a gain of nine. That is very interesting. Our game plan going into this game was to stop the QB scramble, and they do it first play, and it works out. 
Ben Craig gets a carry. He's going to get three yards. Ben Craig having a pretty lackluster season. Has only 100 yards between two games. 107 to be exact. Now, we're going to look at notable inactives. William Jackson, Richie Grant, John Kaminsky, Addison Nolan. We are missing a lot of guys. So Jalen Hurts is going to have to sling the ball. Another scramble by Murray. He's going to stiff arm another guy. He's, going, he's not going to get any yards, but very physical. Burn a five from the 41. The screen pass. And what a play. We have to replay that. Number 42. I don't even know who 42 is on this team. But there was a screen pass. This was a pretty weird play. Looks like Grady Jarrett got tackled to the ground. But it's complete. And then number 42. With the play of the game. That's Pryor. That is Cole Pryor. Hurdling over one man. And then making the tackle. I knew it was a good idea to give him a contract. And now on fourth down. It seems like they're going to punt the ball. I usually don't like to talk about NFL in this series. I did start a, uh, a little video on Monday. If you haven't seen that, you should go watch it. It's called Just Chatting While Playing Madden, I believe. Something around those lines. No, it was just me talking about, you know, the NFL and all these other stuff about my personal life. And yeah. But I quickly want to talk about franchise tags we have at the moment. So, I believe the first franchise tag we got as Hertz is going to be sacked. That is Wheeler. Uh, I believe it was tight end David Njoku. The Browns franchise tagged him. Then it was, I believe, free safety Jesse Bates. That's going to be complete. That's Wrigley. Uh, the Bengals franchise tagged him. And then I believe we had offensive tackle Orlando Brown be uh, as Chandler Jones sacks him. And that's him being a fourth down. And the uh, Falcons are probably going to punt this ball away. Chiefs franchise tagged Orlando Brown. Then we had the Dolphins franchise tag tight end Mike Kosicki. Then we had uh, the, the Cowboys tight end or franchise tag tight end Dalton Schultz so we've already had three tight ends be franchise tagged and just now as I'm recording this Buccaneers have franchise tagged wide receiver Chris Godwin so it looks like the Buccaneers even without Brady at this point wait Never mind. It says this tweet has been deleted. They did. So they did delete the tweet. So apparently Chris Godwin has not yet been franchise tagged. Uh, that's going to a fourth down. I was not expecting Chris Godwin to get franchise tagged. I was expecting a guy like Rob Gronkowski to get franchise tagged. But they did delete the tweet. So, never mind. Chris Gollin has apparently not yet been franchise tagged. They did type according to Rap Sheet, but... Okay, just to quickly read it, according to Rap Sheet, he did say the Bucks are franchise tagging him, but he then said they are going to franchise tag him if they cannot get a long-term deal. As I'm recording this on Tuesday, I believe this is the deadline, so at a certain time today, I believe all tri like all franchise tags are done. That's going to be a huge loss as Chandler Jones is just feasting at the moment. 
which means that practically Chris Allen is going to be on the team regardless, according to what he's saying. They're trying to work out a long-term deal, long-term deal, but if they cannot get one to go through, they're just going to franchise tag him. That's hurts. Throwing. That's the first down, and he had a man, but overthrows him. So yeah, I believe the franchise tags end today. I also believe today. Um, is the day we find out what Aaron Rodgers is doing. Let's go, I believe he said Tuesday afternoon. Mainly because I believe that is when the franchise tag ends. He wants to know what's happening with Devontae Adams. He wants to know, are, are they getting a long-term deal? Is he getting franchise tag? I'd probably make a whole video on that, honestly. The Aaron Rodgers situation before it, uh... It all comes out, but we're actually going to focus more on the game now. Murray scrambled. Murray is just uh, amazing at stiff farming, apparently. That was no man other than Dion Jones. He stiff armed. Probably our second best defensive player behind AJ Terrell. Maybe Grady Jarrett, but Grady Jarrett is getting old. Oh, and Jalen Phillips, so maybe third best. Jalen Phillips might honestly be our best defensive player. Well, we just completed quarter one. Uh, we had a scoreless first quarter. Third and one now at the 12-yard line. And that pass is incomplete. Looks like it was intended for one guy, but they ran right next to each other, so it was very hard to catch it. But uh, the 29-yard field goal attempt is good. And the Cardinals take the lead 3-0 with 725 left to go in the first half. And I like not to return this is Steve Wesley. That is right. Wait, no. Kevin Fox. We did put Kevin Fox as a return man. George Claiborne was not cutting it. And Kevin Fox, he is way too good to not be getting uh, action. And unfortunately, I don't think he will. Chandler Jones, third sack of the game. Hurts. That, I believe, is his fifth time being sacked. Third and 25. The Cardinals are absolutely feasting on Jalen Hurts. This defense has really came to play. And they're going to say incomplete. This seems to be a defensive battle at the moment as we only have three points through, what is this, near 10 minutes? That's a great return. As JT Callaway, the slot wide receiver, gets a holding penalty. First and 10 now from the 45. Or 18, excuse me. That's going to be complete. Very short pass. Second and 16 now from the 47. It's going to be complete to Hopkins, and he's going to be down at the 49, and that's going to bring up 
third and 14. Murray throws caught out of bounds at the 48 and that's gonna bring up fourth down and the punting unit is out there and at the 12 yard line is where the Falcons will start trying to put some boards on uh, points on the board First and tenner, Jalen Hurts, rolling out, throwing, complete. That is Derek Gore. Derek Gore has really flashed, playing like the best receiver on the team. We have a very good receiving core now with Calvin Ridley, Marquise Brown, Derek Gore, and if something would to ever happen to one of those guys, we then have a Philip Madden, Al Lazard, George Claiborne like and we even have some very solid guys on the practice squad so that is I think we personally have the best receiving core maybe not you know top tier receivers well besides Calvin Ridley but Mark Eastbound probably one of the best in the league George Claiborne all around guy Derek Gore, I mean, he's up and coming. Phil Madden, he's a very good backup to a low-tier starter. Alan Zard, very physical. Like, he's also all around. We could probably move him at tight end if we wanted. He's a very good blocker. So I personally feel like we have the best receiving core. We don't have, like, all these top receivers, but we definitely... That's a horrible throw. Tempted for Calvin Ridley, and now it's picked off by number 13. Apparently, the Cardinals do not have Christian Kirk anymore. But uh, the Panthers are going to play the Cowboys. As the Falcons elected to rush free. As... Murray, he's finally just going to scramble. And he's going to slide down. He's not even going to get the first down. I believe that's Saquon Hampton. He only got eight on the play. Dangerous pass, but complete. And the Cardinals are going to use their first time out of the half. With a minute and one remaining. Sean Fenton. Was the lane on coverage and a tackle. And now across midfield and a timeout by Arizona. Their second of the half. Murray. Unblocked is Foyase to Lulukun. Normally you don't see him. Uh, but the Saints are going to be playing the Chiefs. Uh, as well. Normal you do not see Foy say to Lukun Blitz. And he just runs right up the middle, unblocked for the sack. Bird and I now, and that keeps the clock running. Murray. Surveying. He's gonna roll out, throwing on the run. Keandre Jones is after him. And DeAndre Hopkins comes down with the catch, and they're going to have to call a timeout. Now, are they going to go for the touchdown, or are they just going to take the field goal? We're at the 22-yard line. I reckon I would have probably taken one shot towards the end zone, and if it wasn't open, just throw it towards the back of the end zone so it wouldn't be grounding. And then take the field goal. Now, the Cardinals lead this game 6 nothing with 6 seconds, conveniently. What we'll to go in the half. That would more than likely take us into the half. We're going to see a return from Kevin Fox. He's going to break a tackle, but going to be tackled at the 20. And we're just going to see a kneel down from the Falcons. And that is going to do it for half number one. And 
Atlanta's third Thursday night football game in a row. There's the first half stats for those of you who are curious. Now, we take a look around the league. The Buccaneers are playing the Bengals Sunday night. That should be an interesting game. But some key games to note. Panthers and Cowboys. Going to be a huge game for these, these Falcons. Looking at the Cardinals. The Seahawks and Dolphins play. Seahawks being then the 49ers Patriots as we're going to be looking at the Chiefs and Saints. And the uh, Rams and Bills are going to be playing. Those are the games to keep out for if you're a Cardinals fan. And the games that are highlighted are the games to be looking out if you are a Falcons fan. But that's practically going to do it. That was the halftime report. Now we're going to look at next gen stats. Here are the Cardinals when it comes down to throwing the ball short. And here are the Falcons when it comes down to throwing or running the ball inside. As that's going to do it for the halftime report. Falcons receive second half kickoff. And Kevin Fox is going to elect not to return it. Let's go, baby. As we see Jalen Hurts running out there. After a rough first half, I believe he got sacked at least five times. One of which was a fumble as well, but luckily they were able to recover. Three of which were also by Chandler Jones. First and 10 at the 25, 16 minutes left to go in regulation, assuming there is no overtime. Incomplete, Kyle, I, well, I'm going to exit after this play, but I wanted to see a replay, see if he actually caught it. Hurts, Rose, complete to Gordon, up to the 32. I wanted to view last play, but we weren't fast enough. But Kyle Pitts made an incredible catch, just wasn't able to get his feet down and bounce. Third and free now from the 32. Hurts. Incomplete. Saw Chandler Jones there and just had to get that ball away. Jalen Hurts is having a very solid game passing wise. He's only he's only four for five. And the one incompletion was an interception. He's having a very solid game. He just needs this O-line to help him a bit more. With guys like, I believe, Greg Little injured. I know Addison Nolan is. I believe Greg injured is. Or Greg Little is. This Falcons team is just very injured at the moment. They're also missing key guys like Richie Grant and William Jackson back in the secondary. Richie Grant and William Jackson both on the last year of their deals. Richie Grant has been in here. Since, uh, huge gain, uh, by number four. That's Ron Neal Moore, I believe it is. Uh, Richie Grant has been here the whole time. Been our starting safety. Maybe he was a backup one year, but whatever. He's been a starter. He's had injury issues, but he's played very solid when he's been on the field. But that's the thing. Do we want to give him a long-term extension where he could be injured these injuries could plague him it could make his play worse we've seen it happen to guys All right. William Jackson he's been getting injured a lot lately he's also wow Ron down more nearly with this spectacular catch Arguably could have been passing interference, but this is going to be a 58-yard field goal attempt. And he's got it. Wow. He has a cannon of a leg. Um, Back to William Jackson. He has not played very well. He didn't put, play very well last season. This is his third year on the team. Hey, 
Kyle Pitts gets the catch to the 42. We traded for him uh, after one year in Washington. He got a free year deal. Um, we wrote out the deal. He got superstar at the end of his uh, first year here after being placing second in the NFL in the NFC at least in best cornerback behind his teammate AJ Terrell. And then, you know, last season he had a very lackluster season. We decided to give him another one-year deal. Give him the one-year deal. Hopefully he bounces back. You know, hopefully we are able to get right back to where we were, or very close at least. And that is the Super Bowl. And that's complete. That's Gordon. No, that's Brown. Excuse me. But he has not played very well. He's been injured twice. Technically only once, but... You guys saw the recording against the Chiefs. He did get injured. That's Pitts. He is going to be down at the one. And Carlos Basham is going to be injured on that play. First and goal from the one yard line. Hurts. Incomplete. Not able to hold on to it. I believe that is Tony Bishop. It's a fullback dive. CJ Ham. He's going to get very close. And Chris Lindstrom now getting injured. Another key offensive lineman. We're going to exit after this play. But third and goal from like the half yard line. Hurts. Throws. And complete. Calvin Ridley manages to hold on to that for the touchdown. As Chris Lundstrom is going to be out for the remainder of the game, at least. And you guys are going to have to, you know, sit here for a bit. Because the game, being how bad it is, did glitch out. I'm not, I'm pressing square. Like, I don't know if you can hear that. That's me pressing square. It does not work. Wow, actually, we were able to save it. Never mind. <laughs> and we are now exiting, so hopefully we don't get that glitch again. But we need to... Super sure X Factor. Here's all the X Factors and stuff in this game. I don't know why Calvin Ridley, all these guys don't have faces. I know Calvin Ridley started with it. Uh. Is this game glitched? What is happening? What what has happened? I'm afraid to exit the game. Guess we're just gonna have to ride this out and see what happens. Cause I I don't know what what has happened. This is EA being EA though. Now, no matter what happens, we're just going to watch this game. And if, for some reason, this game does not count, we are just going to give the force win or loss, depending on what happens. Now, once again, I cannot recreate stats or anything. I could just manually play the game and try and recreate the stats the best of my ability, but I'm not trying to do that. But this is what happens when a billion-dollar company does not invest what they can into a game it does not do as well you'd think
39. Throwing. Incomplete. He had a DeAndre Hawkins, but over through him. He's going to bring out. Bring up. Bird and nine. Murray has his X Factor. So does Ben Craig. And Murray is going to go down with a sack. That is Jalen Phillips. And now seven seconds left to go in quarter number three. We're probably just going to see one last play. And go into quarter number four. See Derek Gore in motion. We fake end around and hand off to Gordon, I believe. That might actually be Wesley. No, it is Gordon. That's going to do it for quarter three. Got a gain of two, by the way. Uh, second and eight. Hurts. Throwing. Complete. That's Kyle Pitts. Up to midfield. Seven and a half minutes left to go in the game. Gordon. Almost got to the edge, but got tripped up. But he did get a gain of two nonetheless. Saving Collins on the trip up. Gordon got a gain of one. That's going to bring up. They're going to say one and a half, two, actually. Third and six now from the 47. Hurts, throws, complete, that's Ridley. Ridley's going to go up to the 24-yard line. Let's go, and that's going to bring up uh, first and 10 now. Six minutes left to go in the game. Hand off, Gordon, going to get a yard. This run, uh, this defense for the Cardinals has really stepped up being... Uh, one of the worst teams stat-wise, all of a sudden are playing top-tier defensively, but offensively they are struggling, but they are going against one of the best defenses in the NFL, and the Falcons have been since I've taken over, actually. It's very helpful. Incomplete. Nearly intercepted. Four for nine. The field goal unit's out there for a 40-yard attempt. Young Goku in a contract year. He drills it, and there is an injury. Once again, we are not able to check injuries now, though, because, well, the game is glitched. We're just not able to do any of that. As a great return up to 31. First and 10 from the 31, that's complete to Hopkins to the 36. Cardinals only need a field goal or safety. Cardinals probably any point, any way, possible way you can score besides one, which I believe is getting a safety on a kickoff. Or something around those lines would result in a lead change. Third and three now from the 38, this is huge. What do you do with the Cardinals if you don't get this? You're going to do a read option and stiff arming Jalen Phillips. Kyler Murray has been in the weight room. I assumed he was going to get the first down nonetheless from that read option, but I wanted to see if he'd fumble from Jalen Phillips. as a huge carry by Ben Craig. That's something to note as well. Their kicker did hit from 58 earlier this game. So they are already in field goal range when you think about it. This would be a 56-yard attempt, I believe. As Murray, all the way back to the 44. Jalen Phillips, second and 28. I'd say the 40 is probably the target line for field goal-wise. The 41, he did hit from the 41 before, but at the same time, it's going to be pretty hard to hit two 58ers plus. It's going to be hard to hit two 57 plus, to be fair. But Murray gets that pass away, and that's Ben Craig. And that's going to bring up fourth and 20 from the 48. 
The offense is going to stay out there. They need a lot. Murray. Rolling out. Throwing. Complete. Staying in bounds. And just short. Managing to get all the way up to the 30. And they need to the 28. Had to make sure to uh, stay in bounds while juking out Deion Jones. And Deion Jones manages to wrap him up just short of the line again after diving for him. Hurts now slides down at the 39. That's going to be a yard short of the first down. Second and one. That's going to take us to the two minute warning as well. Where we, the Atlanta Falcons lead this game 10 to 9. Second and one from the 39. Both teams still have all three timeouts. Hand off to Gordon. Down at the 45. Timeout. I believe that was Arizona. Their first of the half. Gordon gets right eight timeout Arizona their second and a half they have one remaining a first down now would not end it but it would practically end it hand off to Gordon he gets the first and I believe that is the game sealer he does not get the first actually they're gonna say he shorted the line the game Third and inches. Gordon, he gets the first down. And that is going to do it. Falcons are now in kneeling formation. Where they are going to come away with this win. 10-9. to nine. The score might be a bit different because of how EA, you know, may have just glitched my game. But one more kneel down should do it. And that is going to do it for the ball game. We're going to back out. And we're just going to read the stats from there because, you know, I don't want to risk the game glitching out. It does say franchise, so this does give me some hope. Jalen Phillips, William Jackson, and someone else. I didn't get to see the name. But the score does save, luckily. We do have a recap on the short week. We had we get 2,000 XP for the whole entire offense and 10 morale. Pretty good. As we're now going to go to the schedule, team schedule. What are we looking at time wise? We're at 43. We win this game 10 to 9. Player stats: Murray 151, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Hurts 168, touchdown, interception. Rushing: Murray 6 for 60. Uh, Gordon 12 for 50. Ben Craig, 9 for 31. Wesley, 2 for 9. Hertz, 4 for 6. CJ Ham, 1 for 1. Receiving Pitts, 3 for 73. Ridley, 3 for 42. And a touchdown. Hopkins, 4 for 42. Rondell Moore, 1 for 30. Rashard Higgins, 2 for 27. Max Williams, 4 for 25. Ben Craig, 5 for 21. Derek Gore, 1 for 19. Uh, Marquise Brown, 1 for 15. Ben Jenkins, 1 for 12. Melvin Gordon, 1 for 7. JT Calway, 2 for 6. Blocking. Free sacks allowed by Taylor Martinez. Two allowed by Josh Jones. One by Greg Little and Ezra Cleveland. Defensively, three tackles for loss for Taylor Jones and Jalen Phillips. One for Foy Seda Lukun, Eric Mills, uh, Javier Wheeler, and Carlos Basham. Three sacks for Taylor Jones, two for Jalen Phillips, and one for Foy Seda Lukun, Javier Wheeler, Carlos Basham, and an interception for Michael Ajamudier. Kicking, both sides are perfect. Punting, Bailey, 4 for 185. Joseph Carlton, 4 for 159. Kick return, Wesley uh, Hardy Vincent, 2 for 46. Kevin Fox, 1 for 15. Hunter return, Kevin Vincent, Harvey Vincent, what? 3 for 12, Kevin Fox, 2 for 5. Injury report. So does Chris Lindstrom? He does not get injured. 
we are going to get uh, William Jackson and uh, John Kaminsky back for next game. But we're going to be playing the Eagles. And um, I don't know if we'll watch that game. Unless if we're so, so happen to be in another Friday Night Football. They are 2-1, and one, so we might have to watch this game. As the Buccaneers, still 3-0. And once again... Ricky Terry, DeAndre Huntley, Larry Mabry, Caleb Morris, Carter Rose, and KJ McGee. As we do have John Kaminsky and William Jackson returning from injury. But we're going to quickly... Uh, you know... Manage roster, adjust lineup, we go all the way to practice. We are once again missing six spots as Victor Franklin, Luke Brockers, and now uh, Aaron Cash, uh, Deron Pettis, and I believe Julius George, and Quentin Biggers, I believe his name is. They're all... The only guys remaining, uh, Julius George, uh, Aaron Cash, Luke Brockers, and Victor Franklin, I believe all have been here since the start, but, I mean, who knows how long they're going to stay here, because I really like Aaron Cash, uh, and Luke Brockers, and Quinn Biggers, so it all depends on, you know, what happens. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. In the next episode, we're going to go over the game plan Elite QB, the, the QB1 check-in. And we're probably going to resign, not resign, uh, assign some free agents to our practice squad. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.